Hello and welcome to the Book by Book, a podcast about the odd book or two you've read. I'm your host Scott and I'm not alone, Toby's here too. This episode we're talking about Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. It's going to be a fairly spoiler heavy episode, so if that's okay with you, continue on and I'll see you on the other side. Someone who might join a sports team ever. Um, a sports team. I did join a five-a-side football club. Before we start, mm. hello, listeners. Thank you for joining us again in this uh, review of a book or a film or whatever it is. It's a book by book, so you know it's a book. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you for joining us. Um, please like and subscribe. We usually leave this till the end. Mm. And we're going to try and start with this so that, we can gauge how many people actually listen to get this far into the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) So if you could like it, that would be amazing. And if you haven't subscribed and you're hearing it for the first time, if you could subscribe as well, you would make our summer. My, uh, my understanding is you're being hit by air pollution. Yeah. The wildfires and air pollution. Like I'm over here. We're getting pictures of what looks like Blade Runner 2042 but it's New York City. Mm, it's sort of sweeping around. So I don't quite know how it works, but maybe not today being the Sunday, but at some point in the week there was like over 100 separate wildfires Whoa. raging in, in Canada. I don't know how that works. A hundred, like if that's, if one fire breaks off into two fires, like the mm. middle bit goes out. Uh, mm. So so in my head, I'm thinking of one giant wildfire with breaks mm-hmm. or literally in a hundred different areas different fires broke out either way it's not great it's it's i think it's a lot around ontario and yeah. here in toronto it just got like it looked a bit smoggy and you could mm-hmm. just taste it in the air like someone right. was like barbecuing yeah okay. uh, i didn't think it was that bad but i've been sick all week and i thought i started off just hay fever and i was like okay mm. well it's hay fever and the smoke's making it a bit worse and I did go for an epic swim. Well, I went for a swim. For me, it was epic. For most <laughs> swimmers, just a swim. It was like an hour swim, solid. Okay, um, yeah. And the next day, I was just awful. My sinuses were just effed. Um, but I must admit, some of the some of the imagery that's coming out of it, although it's not great in any way, shape, or form, it does look like amazing, like proper fantasy mm, environments and scenes. Photography. And oh, it's just... You know, you can imagine you're in the Forgotten Realms or something like that with this red hue just spreading everywhere and, like, buildings raising up, rising out the smog and stuff. Mm. We, cool. we were hanging around in um, Birmingham once, and I was like, it's it's for anyone who doesn't know, I'm like a VFX worker, listeners, mm. and I always feel like I can't really transfer these skills to, any, to anything else. Anything mm. anyone comes up with, it's, like, more or less the same thing. I work in film and TV, and people say... Oh, why don't you do advertisements? Like, yeah, that's that's just the same thing, you know. Or like, I, I don't really have an eye for photography. It just right. So I was sort of looking into like coding or just something different, like a backup. Mm. And you sort of knocked in. I was like, what would you do if you were like, if if your industry was just wiped out? Mm. You were like, ah, oh, you know what? I'd just love to own a little coffee shop. Mm. Exactly that. <laughs> Perfectly. Yeah. No, I would. I would. I really like. The idea, and I, funnily enough, I was speaking about this last night with a a an owner of a place called Tilt, which is a bar that specialises in uh, pinball machines. Oh, nice! So full of pinball machines, and they have coffee, and they have alcohol, mm. and they have a license, and they rent out spaces. And I was talking about this to her last night, how she got started and things like this, and I um, just went for it and. They've been going seven years now. They survived COVID and all those sorts of things. It was a really interesting chat. Um, and she was saying that, you know, sort of having a space that they can, and what they've done is they've taken, they've got this big spare room upstairs in their in their venue uh, that they're now giving away for free. The only thing they take is what is made at the bar, made in the coffee and made from the pinball machines, but they oh, offer okay. the space out to free. And it was an idea that she came up with and went, let's just do it let's have a go and see what happens mm. in a, in the first three days they got 30 bookings oh wow mm-hmm. mm. ranging from poetry re- book clubs uh, just choo, 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 loads of different variety of things and it really sort of infused me a bit to think you know what 
we can you can do something like this quite easily you mm, just have possible. to have the the balls to go for it mm. much like live in our <laughs> book we're going to be talking about legends and lattes mm. um when and you... going, also we're talking about uh just speaking briefly about the this sort of idea of changing industries and things like that this is exactly what the author of this book did he was a computer game programmer mm. and and shifted mm-hmm Got fed up with it, was working in it for numerous years and decided that he was going to change industries. And um next thing you know, he was he was doing on the side, he was doing narration. Uh I don't I've never heard of him, but uh, in a lot no. of interviews I've heard, people seem like he's 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 quite a renowned audiobook mm. uh, narrator. Yeah. Narrator, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah, so we we are here today to talk about mm. uh a book called Legends and Lattes. And mm-hmm. then we have a little bonus at the end, stick around for that, called Pages to Fear, which is a short story that came at the end of the, the main book, Legends mm-hmm. of Lattes. So welcome. Hey, okay. hey, hey. Um, author Travis Baldry. Mm-hmm. Please um, like and subscribe. And... <laughs> please like and subscribe. <laughs> this on, is please. a 2022 book. It is indeed. It's a fairly new-ish in mm-hmm. the world. And it's mm-hmm. kind of a runaway hit. Yes, it is. It's just a, well, I wouldn't say it's a surprising runaway hit, but it's a runaway hit for sure. For a lot of the reviews I was looking at for the review roundup or readers' reviews, 39,000 positive five star reviews and mm-hmm. 451 star reviews. That's on Goodreads. I don't, you probably knew this already, but it was written as part of the, the NanoWrite month. Mm-hmm, NanoRimo. Yeah, which we've done yeah. ourselves several times, or, or, or we've attempted it. Yeah, I think for two years, several times. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And set ourselves rules and engaged in trying to write our own novel. Mm. So it's interesting. We'll go into a bit more depth about this later on, but it's just interesting seeing this writer's approach to and struggles with writing this during that month. That was what instigated it. Oh, so nice! I it was born out the back of that. Mm. This guy seems a very cool easy going um, mm, no. um who just yeah. knocked it out of the park and published yeah. it and in three months he had a hit like yeah well, he, yeah it was he <laughs> self-released it on amazon as well didn't he originally mm-hmm. and then That's, it was it was it was doing so well they were like well okay the let, thousands let's of one uh five stars what caught tours attention in a matter mm-hmm. of months mm-hmm. um, so it's interesting he so basically caught a perfect storm a, a zeitgeist that people were looking for something different and he nailed it by the sounds mm. of it anyway let's go into the synopsis a brief mm-hmm. overview of what the book is about after a lifetime of bounties and bloodshed viv is hanging up her sword for the last time a battle weary orc aims to start afresh opening the first ever coffee shop in the city of thune but old and new rivals stand in her way of success not to mention the fact that no one has the faintest idea of what coffee actually is. <laughs> if Viv wants to put the blade behind her and make her plans a reality, she won't be able to go it alone. But the true rewards of the uncharted path are the travellers you meet along the way. And whether drawn together by ancient magic, flaky pastry or a freshly brewed cup, they may become partners, family and something deeper than she could ever have dreamt. Nice. I've got a little bit more about the author. Mm. Travis is a full-time audiobook narrator, as we've uh, discussed already. Um, what are your thoughts on audiobook or narration? Have you ever thought about doing it? Um, I have. Uh, I've, I've missed that window with AI taking over. I've heard of like mass audiobook narr- like narrators laid off because AI is starting to hit that pitch. Personally, it feels if I'm watching one of those YouTube videos, I, I feel like I can definitely tell an AI mm-hmm. voice, but that doesn't mean it's not just getting sophisticated by the day. Yeah, I love the idea, but the um, I just don't think I've got the inflection or the, the voice for it. Uh, there right. was a website where you put like 10 minutes of footage on and then people like, mm. would, like choose your thing and hire you. I just never got around to it. So in short, yes, I have thought about it. No, I haven't done it. Yes, so similar thing. I looked at it very briefly and I was just like, do I feel like I have the ability to A, sit down long enough and record an entire book mm. 
It would be fun to give it a go, I think. At least one book. Try like a short story or something like okay. that. Okay. See well, what happens. Well, Brilliant. All right, we'll get one for you. We'll figure we'll figure something out. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll a short for you. Um <laughs> where where are we at next? Uh, where was I? He he spent decades designing and building video games. And the idea for the novel was born from narrating endless fantasies novels that usually involved, due to his voice, mm. male protagonists facing world-ending threats, mm. high drama and characters emotionally calibrated around that sort of storytelling. Then sometime during the height of COVID pandemic during 2022, which, you know, that, that was last year, we're sat here reading a book by an unknown author yeah, that was released last year. He wrote it in 2022, sorry. And it's just, that's a that's incredible. Let's yeah, be that's honest. what you want. Yeah. That he wrote during the height of COVID pandemic during 2022. He told some friends he wished he could read a Hallmark channel set in the Forgotten Realms, something akin to chicken soup rather than pub grub. Mm-hmm. When the National Novel Writing Month hit, he began writing, and the end result, after many iterations, was the book we're about to review. Nice. Have you ever read any of those uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul books? Nope. This is my first one. That was one of my questions later on, is what do you think to this uh, newfound genre? Although it's probably not new, and I'm just new to me. <laughs> cozy. Oh, cozy well, we'll, we'll come back to that then on yeah. question time. <laughs> Reader reviews. Shall I go into that? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm Read interested reviews. to see who didn't like it. Mm. <laughs> the big search terms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the positives, we'll start with that. We've got Riley with, if Dungeons and Dragons had a baby with Animal Crossing, you would <laughs> get the absolute delight that is Legends and Lattes. This is the kind of fantasy I want. The coziest, cutest slice of life fantasy about an orc who wants to quit the barbarian business and open up a coffee shop. Cue the loveliest cast of characters who help her on this endeavour. Please, author, give me more of this. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yun. Oh, my word. Is cosy fantasy a thing? Because I absolutely need more of this in my life. I don't know what I expected going in. The cover would have made me think it's some sort of Dungeons and Dragons fanfic. But I don't know anything about the game, so I imagined this wouldn't be my jam. I was so wrong. Ah, this story is just bringing me joy and heart on every page. To read it is to be enveloped in the gentlest, warmest of hugs. You don't have to be an orc or bounty hunter to fully appreciate the themes in here of starting anew, finding yourself and a place to belong and opening your heart to never thought of possibilities. In such a core part of the human experience, this book captured a most lovely rendition of it. Oh. Uh, one more positive, Tammy. Most of these were females, I noticed. There's a lot of female reviewists. Oh, um, okay. From, this is from Tammy. Look, is this objectively the best book I've ever read? No. But do <laughs> I have a single negative thing to say about it? Also, no. I and like then, that one. Yeah. I think she sort of summed up my thoughts, if I'm honest. Yeah. Negatives. <laughs> Leah, if this is the future of fantasy, then count me out. There is just nothing to this story. No imagination, interesting relationships, intriguing themes, etc. The characters all begin and stay one dimensional. And instead of fantasy version of cafe, we just get a replica of Starbucks or any contemporary cafe chain with the exact same menus, equipment, social norms and patterns of cafe interactions. I want to see more kindness and collaboration in fantasy. But here we have got artificially sweetened wish fulfillment where nothing felt earned. In summary, cute premise, but it delivered watery instant coffee instead of a cinnamon latte with cream. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, This is Sophie, a self-proclaimed fantasy book addict. I feel bamboozled and betrayed. I generally don't understand the hype. I often hear this pitched as a cosy fantasy, but it's the most boring fantasy I've ever read in my entire life. The plot was non-existent, the characters felt flat, and the character dynamics poorly explored. At one point, I was actively rooting for Viv's downfall, not because I hated her as a character, but because I was so bored. Clearly, I'm not the target audience. Yeah, I was going to um, say, what, what are her other, what are the books she loves? Like, at mm, what point is it just 
that's that's what cozy fantasy is. It's like me mm. reading an action going, there's too much violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, one last one on the negatives, Mr. or M. Greggs. The target demographic for this book is people who have never read a book, oh. but who have spent their lives in coffee shops watching other people read books and wondering what it might be like to read the book themselves. <laughs> I'm not the target demographic for this book. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm, I, I guess I would wonder if there's a percentage of people who just the hype came on the hype and therefore mm-hmm. it was just a hard sell. Interesting. I yeah. guess I like the, the negative ones just because I couldn't, I was wondering. I, I imagine they all just being not for me, but I can see why people like it. Yeah. 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 No, that, I think they I think they do bring up some interesting points in their sort of like the the, the two dimensional characters, uh, not two dimensional, but the sort of lack of distinct character arcs, I think. Mm. They sort of arrive, they set up, they face a, a, a bit of adversary, but not much. I guess my response was supposed to be, I think that's the point, though. I yeah. That's the coziness. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, cozy fantasy. Have you read any before this one? Uh, it depends if you if you put Terry Pratchett in that group. Mm. Not necessarily all of Terry Pratchett's. And I guess very much like the cozy mystery. I wonder if there's some clear bullet points of, like, you know, this setting, like, it can't be mm. a bigger risk than this but there's a couple that spring to mind of Terry Pratchett or moving pictures which mm-hmm. is I don't know if like satire parody sort of brings it out of the cozy mystery but in in moving pictures it's just Discworld tries to create Hollywood oh wow and they start okay. making movies in going right. postal uh I think they just create a post service right you know, like a like an envelope like a, mm. a FedEx style private thing uh I do I don't I don't remember what I've read of his. I, I try to read them all in an order and it's just they're, they're very hit and miss for me. But I think one of my favourite moments, I think, is back in one of the first ones when Flowers arrives and he's just sort of like a really, like, what's it called when you're like innocent, naive. naive he tries yeah. to explain to a barman, like, insurance. <laughs> right. like, this world has never heard of insurance before. So then the moment he turns around, the barman sets his bar on fire and starts like a city fire because he's like, I'm short. I'm just going to get some money from that guy now. <laughs> um, Brilliant. So I uh, know I don't think he is by far the first person, but I think it's it's just sort of, you know, hit that, hit a, a big populace. Mm. Um, I guess Discworld can feel quite um, like excluding because it's okay. such a... If you've ever come across that sort of feeling where something just feels like someone else's because it's you've come onto it quite late and there's yeah. so much of it and people yeah, it's a vast people have a list of their favorite twenty five books and mm-hmm. the 20, like there's you know a hundred books and I guess this is quite just a modern one that mm. you know people everyone put drinks coffee yeah <laughs> yeah they just coffee and there's like I don't know the satire but people can get on board with this of like I don't think we're the only people to have had the coffee. A little coffee house dream. Yeah, you know, no, definitely not. Be your own boss. Um, yeah. So it taps into probably quite a grounded, normal escapism fantasy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, completely agree. That's that's definitely how I felt reading it. I was just like, oh, this is so, this is lovely. I'm really mm. enjoying the idea and experiencing somebody having an idea and seeing it through, leaving behind and taking the risks. And I think it, 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 it relayed that and portrayed that quite well. I don't, one of the negative reviews mentioned the fact that it was too much like a coffee shop, a here coffee shop, and mm. less fantasy coffee shop. The only the only fantasy element really of the coffee shop was the some of the characters <laughs> and the setting, yeah. Mm. Do, do, would you agree with that? Do you, do you think feel like you wanted more? Of a fancy element good question. When I heard the concept, like this, this sort of blipped up on my radar quite a while ago. Not quite when it hit its fame, but I guess when it was released. And so I was sort of intrigued. I was like, you know what? I think I've got to read that. We talk about coffee enough on this given podcast. Like it's a fantasy book. Yeah. I was like, I think Toby might dig that. And I'm always trying to like, let's let's do some fantasy. So maybe this is the perfect book for us. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be like she came to our world on a mission. Like there right. Was be wizards. Yep. And that she sort of came into our world for a mission, like tele not teleported, you know, like yeah, yeah. Like teleported for a, for like a crazy fantasy mission and dimension jumped, and then that's where the coffee came from. Mm-hmm. Um so I was I was disappointed, but for example, we just find out that the gnomes in the gnomish land have just mm-hmm. like 
created coffee. They sort of, I don't know, it doesn't feel like they switch race for spe- species. Is, is mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like the gnomes didn't come off as like Italians. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? There but, was a very a distinctive difference, yeah, between all the different races. They were just like almost just people. But again, does that tap into the cozy, the cozy element of it? Mm, I mean, I, I guess it was intentional. Mm. I guess he wanted to give us something so familiar in an alien setting, mm. as it were. I, I guess, like, I don't know if you're asking, like, was the uh, coffee machine going to be some crazy invention mm-hmm. that doesn't mm-hmm. actually mirror our espresso <laughs> machines and <laughs> coffee makers? I guess so. I guess... <sighs> I guess it just felt like that would have been bogging it down in detail. Yeah, that isn't yeah. really what I was worried or concerned about. Mm-hmm. So I didn't. I, you're probably right, or that that person's probably right. Like it's just oven for oven, coffee for coffee, mug for mug. Yeah. There was yeah. no new inventions outside of the no. magic stone. But I, I didn't. I didn't personally mind that. No, um, I didn't either. I, I didn't have. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, mm, I just kind of wanted it to get on with the niceness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's exactly it. It, lay, it allowed us to spend more time with the characters mm. and the, the adventure of setting up and facing what amounted to a very few challenges i did like that like you, you mentioned the stone there the, the, the scarlet stone mm. that's how i that's how i read it which is if, for those that uh spoiler warning for those that haven't read it it's basically she has this stone which we open the book on where she takes down this huge beast it's our last battle and you literally you come in on the final swing and mm. she plunges her hand in pulls out this stone that's in essence like the heart i guess and this is a mystical item that is supposed to bring or favor the owner with riches heart's, heart's in essence. content yeah a heart's like, content like yeah just draw in what what your wishes are mhm and her viv who is the barbarian is her wish is to retire from slaying and run this coffee shop um, and she buries it under the flagstones of of the of the coffee shop that she's working in, mm. and it starts to pick up very quickly, and is very successful in the small town that, that she's having it in. And she's never sure whether it's because of the stone or whether it's because of it's the success. atmosphere, the coffee, mm. and everything else like that. And that's what the crux of the, I guess the the rise intention of fall intention that you generally look for in a book. That... Mm, I guess that's the moral of the story. <laughs> mm, mm, yeah. Um, and it plays out quite nicely towards the end about what is and how much of an impact the stone is have or has. Mm. Um, but we'll let you find out for yourselves, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'd have to we'll, we'll try to go mid spoiler level. Like we won't yeah, we'll yeah. just give away the clunky ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but, but... The, clunk, the clunky ending. Oh no, no, we we won't clunk <laughs> the ending. Oh, we won't clunk the ending. I was gonna, whoa. <laughs> You're really into cooking and food. Mm, I, you know what I was going to do? I was, uh, I was going to try and cook a thimblet <laughs> the recipe at the back of the book and try it on Dream, but I never got around to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you do, send us a recording. We'll definitely put it yeah, on the channel. Yeah. That's a biscotti. A, thumb, a thimblet was just like... A, just a biscotti a biscuit. Biscotti, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow, thimble. Like, I think oh, something I loved about this, yeah. I will get back onto the food, is that it felt like... It could just stop in tracks and equivalent of like like camera pan follow any mm-hmm. of the characters mm-hmm. for like the rest of the book and I would have been okay with that. Yeah. Each yeah, character no, they weren't massively deeply complex, but no nope. in, in a very human way, they just had human wants and needs that mm-hmm. weren't like I guess like the coffee shop mirrored more how we feel about people that mm. we, we might get a glimpse of what someone wants in the world or isn't afraid to go or like a personality traits yeah without it being super dramatic or over the yeah. top yes uh, completely which agree some people i guess didn't like mm-hmm. but i i was just i, I thought it was super sweet like i raced through yep. this book like it's a couple hundred pages in total with the yeah. short story still under 300 pages mm-hmm. it's one of those books where i want to slow down to soak it in mm. whilst i'm gobbling it up yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Absolute delight. Have you ever read any of the the Red Wall books or seen the Red Wall cartoon? No. That's no, that's no. a nice one for food porn. That book right, would okay. just stop for a big feast and it would <laughs> just be pages of describing uh, mice eating. So it was very reminiscent of me for me, mm. this one. Mm. But this I don't think nitpicks the word, but at what point it's like, oh no, 
Thimble's taking over. This is now a bakery shop that sells coffee. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Thimble was great. Just, he was uh, great. I loved it. I loved his um the quietness to his character, yeah, like the barely words. saying aware anything whatsoever. And everything was done through expression and grunt and just mm-hmm. excitement. Like the joy he gets from having a double oven was just like, oh, I really felt it with him. I was like, go on, make mm. me some more. <laughs> yeah, just the just the slow progression of like the band of merriment. I guess the first one is is her, like a carpenter. Yeah, cow. Cow. And there's just really sweet moments where we see him like just being won over and like not really understanding it, but being won mm-hmm. over by her, I guess, and just the mm-hmm. passion of it. And I think he he's the one who comes up with the sign and the name. And that mm-hmm. was just a super sweet moment when he was like almost shy. Like, are we friends? Yeah. Have I overstepped the mark by yeah. naming your coffee store and getting a sign printed? Are you are you we've talked about it a bit before? I never know if I made the edit. Have you have you watched or played the game Coffee Shop? No, but you have mentioned it, yes. It is, I mean, it's literally the, the cozy gaming. So right. fantasy show coffee. I was wondering if that guy sort of as a gamer I was like, oh, that's that's kind of cool. It's mm-hmm. uh, you are a barrister gamer, and it's all your point of view. You don't see your hands or anything, and it's mm. basically a text based game. And you're sort of, I think you're in like Seattle, but you're in a sort of funky world where orcs and succubus and, and aliens exist. And oh, they gosh. just come into your coffee shop and talk through their problems, like through text. Mm-hmm. And you talk back, and every now and then you make them a coffee and you learn different coffees and you sort of have to gauge their attitude to make them the right coffee. And even then they just go, mm, that's not what I was expecting. Thanks. And push the coffee away. <laughs> and I've never, I don't think I've got the constitution to play it, but I've watched people play it on Twitch a lot. Yeah. If, if you can get someone who's good at like narrating it. Yeah. So it's just like, cause I have a desk job and when it's quiet, it's a perfect game to just watch someone else play. Yeah. And I, my only problem is I can't find someone to play it from the bloody beginning. I have to just, Come in right. with someone's randomly. So I've seen the middle of this game. There's two of them, like 50 times. I'm like, someone, yeah. I want a message. Can you start again f- just for me? <laughs> anyway, Ramble, there, there's a, I guess there are a lot of incidences of like cozy gaming, mm. animal crossing, and yes. that type of like low stakes, uh, mm-hmm. just for the fun of it. I guess it's just branching its way in a popular way to the, the novel format now. Yeah, I, I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed this. Mm. And how quickly and how much I wanted to keep going back to it, like stealing moments just to catch a couple of pages, like going to the toilet at work and taking it with me. Oh, yeah, that's lovely when that happens. I just can't stop. Talking about characters, who was your favourite of the characters? Is it too easy to say Thimble? Is Thimble like the minion, like the memorable, cute, loving one? Yeah. Uh, But would would Thimble's own novel be too much? I don't think so, but... um... (laughs) I mean, I think that's it. They, I don't think I had a favourite character. They just mm-hmm. all sort of got in bed and were like smiling and happy and huggy and hippy. And mm. it was just the the nature of this found friendship, you know, make your family, let you choose your family. Yeah. I I really, personally, I really enjoyed the uh, the, the cat. Oh, the dire yeah. Wolf, the dire wolf sized <laughs> cat. Dire, dire cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's just that. That, the idea of that that as a character was great. It's just like nonchalant. I just walk in, curl up, walk out, disappear, mm. lay where I want to, do what I want to, protect you if I need to, but carry on doing my own thing, vanish for weeks and then reappear. That was just great. Mm, very much the nature of cats. Mm-hmm. The thing of like the, the cat sort of does what it wants to do. Did you feel there was a clear because of, of the, the genre and the coziness of it and what you would normally have within sort of styles of writing is a clear beginning, middle and end. Mm. Do you feel that is necessarily applicable to cozy writing or genre? And did you feel this had one? Uh, yes and yes, to be honest. It still felt mm. like we had a clear, you know, she set out to make a coffee shop and then the trials and tribulations of like making it, finding the place. Mm-hmm. This sort of anxiety of like no customers, like customers like coming yeah. in and not spending. Yeah, I anything. really felt that. Yeah, uh, and then sort of becoming a success, but also uh, one of the sort of many I don't think sideline, but just strands of the story was just that there's mm-hmm. like a sort of sort of mafia racket, sort of demanding yes. like protection money and and Viv being like a sort of six and a half foot orc 
with muscle <laughs> and the history of fighting just refuses. Yeah. And so there's always the this ground. threat of, you know, someone like, oh, you better pay by Monday, mm-hmm. uh, which sort of comes in full circle. I thought that played out quite nicely. Again, it, it, there was always the fear that it could easily fall back into battle hardened. Mm. It never did. It, it refrained from doing that. And it, the characters literally addressed that as a an approach and like, I mean, that's you. You you've left left this this world behind. Mm. Don't don't step one foot back into it. Otherwise, you'll probably go. You end up two foot back into it. Mm. Uh, I guess I don't know if this is like getting a bit of spoiler warning. So if, if you mm. just haven't read this, but you're tempted, just it's just really joyful. I think you know, mm-hmm. even if you don't love it, I think you won't dislike it. Mm. There's a scene at the end where she basically chooses the coffee machine over her sword. Mm-hmm. It's just like the moment I was like, she's made it, she's done it. Like it doesn't yeah. really matter anymore. Like she's, she's been cautious this whole book about like, I think she even tries to cheat at one time where she gets her old guilds together. Yes. And they're like, so are you just asking us to go and kill them rather than you? <laughs> and, uh, no, but I thought you could. And it's like, yeah, that's the can... same thing as basically <laughs> you're, you're just using force. And yeah, I think at one point she says like, like her sword hangs above the, the coffee bar. Mm-hmm. I guess it's the equivalent of having like a bar with a like a baseball bat, just like a you know, just be caught. Just we're not we're not chumps here. Yeah. But at one point, she actually says like, "You should throw this guy out." And and it was something like, "Yeah, but I just don't want, I don't want the stories of like, ah, oh, don't mess with this coffee shop owner." Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did. I didn't want the thuggery of it to overtake yeah. the coziness of it all. Like I wanted to be yeah. a welcome place that people are safe from, not coming in cautious. They're going to upset me. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I liked about the character of Tandri. I thought she was a really good moral compass, mm. the, the succubent, um, and she, yeah, she's largely, the, yeah, the conscience of the the, the moral direction that mm. she's the one that's very much like just don't even delve slightly in this world. When she brings a group back together and says, "Could you deal with this?" Tandri's like, "But deal with it in a way that doesn't involve violence." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, I guess I, so. Yeah, that's what I liked about her character. Mm, Tandri's like a succubi, and I guess she mm. sort of nods to this, like, I guess the equivalent of like a homophobic past. Not from mm-hmm. her, like she's been like kicked out. Mm. Of, I guess she talks about, is it like a co- equivalency of university or studies mm-hmm. where she just wasn't accepted? And I yep. guess uh, like just very gently, we sort of nod towards like, like a romance. Yeah, bludging between, romance. Mm-hmm, between Tandri oh, and sure, I didn't expect I did not see that coming at all. And it was a nice surprise. Mm. Do you feel like it was necessary? Like we're just piling on the gushing happiness of everything. Like she's not just getting a coffee shop. She's getting a full happy ever after. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's what I was there for. So I was, even though I I expect it again, I was like pleasantly surprised at the sort of the awkwardness of this fledgling romance and the sort of awkward silences that, weren't there at all at the beginning and then slowly drip fed in and and you know when when everything was going to pot and she needed somewhere to stay that's where she went and mm. then there was the especially yeah. seeing it from from viv just this like on the outset confident you know mm. I, we we get you know being being host the narrator like the narrator thoughts of like how she was she was worried about the the unsuccess but for everyone else she was just this well she like yeah. not demanding but knew what she wanted Mm-hmm. like goal driven woman and then to see her sort of like get giddy and shy and, and like yeah I don't know, like yeah the killing the moments was super sweet yeah. yeah that was great the character of Viv was very well realized mm. really really good and like just the idea of her not sleeping in a in a bed and everything was about the coffee shop and nothing was about her mm. it's just about although it is directly indirectly about her and her dreams like her self care and everything was put to the side in favor of creating this and realizing this dream. So beyond the coffee shop, which was pristine and perfect was mm. nothing in essence. Mm. And I thought that was really good. And again, Tandri just sort of highlights that and says, you need to focus on other things, not just this. <laughs> Take um, a break once in a while. Yeah, exactly. I also loved, I can't remember his name, but the Pendry was it? I think it was Pendry, the musician. The musician, mm. his his and he, but the way that he again goes on quite a nice little journey of 
nervousness turning up can i please maybe if you <laughs> don't mind sure okay i'm gonna have a go oh i'm really bad i'm gonna go Shoom, runs off and then sort of returns sheepishly with his tail wedged between his legs two weeks later and one i was moment. really uh i guess a bit lost with his first performance was it mm-hmm. implying he like had a distortion and an amp and he just went like super heavy like he like he sort of pulled out some like nirvana so yeah. like he just you know what I mean like I, just sort I, of went, I, yeah like it wasn't that it was bad it was just like that scene in Back to the Future where Michael J Fox just rock, rocks out some futuristic rock and roll which the world isn't ready for yeah yeah and in and, and essence I don't know whether it was necessarily rock and roll but it was for me it was sort of like almost like <laughs> <laughs> he just Jimi Hendrix that. stuff or something <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas it should have been <laughs> right, right, the setting was different. <laughs> yeah. But I guess yeah, we see him boom. I guess there were a bunch of peripherals I felt weren't quite like I just would have liked to explore a bit more. Mm. Henry's a prime example of one, mm-hmm. and there's and like a fun, Penny. like a like a chess player. Yeah, oh, that was he was great, and it's just sort That's of touched great. upon. And I never, yeah. I wasn't sure. Like, is this future book? Is this just world building or like sequel mm-hmm. baiting? Or what do you what do you think is his story? Uh, is he not um uh, spoiler alert for this character is he not playing himself in the future that's what i thought yeah yeah but i so thought he's... he tells us that he does but yeah i i i, I don't quite get my brain couldn't get it I'm but I, that's why i mean it out. just didn't explore i'm not saying it had to like mm-hmm. give away his character but just explore more because it just felt like a sort of side mission that didn't come out too much i didn't know if it was kind of hinting at like this is a sign that the copy shop is successful mm because he can um, sit in it in the future. Uh, um, but that that's kind that's of what I mean nice. about. I, I just like would that. have liked it to have been explored a bit more. That yeah. character. No, wow. and, and I don't know. I think I think I think the fact that we could have this conversation about who the hell or what. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at what point do we say it's Nano Rimo and he might have thought, ah oh, crap, I've got another thousand words to do. <laughs> uh, uh, did I say there was an old guy playing chess? Right, let me just right, I've done my thousand yeah. words for the day, I'll just stop it there. <laughs> Brilliant. He's playing himself in the future. Got, got, got mm. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I gave a little bit of the audiobook a go because I was okay. like, so Travis Baldry is an audiobooker, like mm. a, a narrator, as we talked about. And so it makes sense he would narrate his own book. But this being from the POV of a woman, I was like, yep. is, this, is this one of those ones that's like, I, I probably wouldn't be used to listen to The Handmaid's Tale as narrated by, I don't know, like, you know, mm. like a guy. It just it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And so it was only a little clip I was allowed on like the preview. And I don't think Viv was in the scene, but he does. He is good at audio booking. I can see why he's hired for fantasy stuff. Mm-hmm. He can just husk out his voice and just give different characters enough of a voice characteristic without going full right. cartoony. So it was, yeah. uh, I would be, I probably will check it out in later times, but the full audio book, it does, it does get highly rated. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's his book, so he knows where the inflection was meant to be. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> he knows yeah, the yeah, drama yeah. he was going for. Which... Yeah. So he's I... there's already a, a prequel. Yes, I did see that this morning. The, mm. the, the book zero and book one, which is this is book yeah. one. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, that didn't enthuse me. I, I just want the further adventures of this coffee shop. Not... Oh, okay. I've, that was one of my questions is would you want more from these characters or would you want different characters? Within the same world, or I'd be happy for like Star Trek Deep Space Nine, where like the coffee shop is the hub, and maybe mm-hmm. we follow a few different characters come and go, but we also see see like the the, the future of the coffee shop. Mm. Not, I don't think I'm ever too big a fan of prequels. I think let me think of some. Um, like my least favorite of the Dark Tower books is the prequel because I, I just feel like get on with the story and you've just given right. me a thousand pages of this guy that's like a 17 year old and I, mm. I don't care i know how it turns out for him right okay yeah and i guess the the maze runner had a few prequels and the the, the hunger mm-hmm. games i just think I, i'm not i guess if for hard fans who just like oh you know i, I need to know how this thing started mm. but i'm just i if it's good i'll enjoy it but i'm, I'm i would always rather the future than the mm. past and if it's that key, then it should be something that snuck into the existing books rather mm. than stopping the journey to go back. Okay. So uh, which I, I don't think Legends and Lattes will be. I don't think we're on a journey in that sense. No. 
listening to his interviews, like I said, he seems very, not too cool for school, but very nonchalant, very like, just happy it was a runaway success. But, mm. you know, someone asked him like, do you feel like you found, like, do, do you want to write in other genres or have you found a niche you found where you happy? And very quickly he's like, no, I definitely want to expand out. Right. You know, he says he he wrote it as an experiment. He just wanted to know what it was to write a book because he was dealing with author so much. Mm-hmm. He, he never, I think he knew he was going to like self-publish, but I think he just thought that was going to be it. And he said like dealing with tour publishers was a longer process than writing mm-hmm. the book. Right, mm-hmm. okay. So he has done a, se- a prequel. Uh, this isn't a spoiler. From what I know, it's, it's Viv in her like 20s, her early 20s. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess if he's capturing the cozy, it's it's called like bone bone dust and yeah. bookshelves or something. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a similar concept in a like a quaint bookstore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know enough about it to really speculate. But Did you... I don't like. I want these characters to come back, and they're not yeah. going to in a satisfying way in a prequel. Within the essence of not looking for prequels or, or you know interested in hearing about characters and how they got to where they are. I guess it leads us nicely into the pages to fill, which is a, in essence a prequel about how she got the manuscripts that told her about the the, the stone that she uses and the lore right, behind right, the, that. The, did, how the, did you feel that sat within this? I guess I, I take it you read it pretty much straight away afterwards. And no, I, I only read it yesterday. Yeah, same. Um, I I I was a bit bored. Were you? I just wasn't. I just. The thing is, I, I I see it. It was the perfect little area for a short story. Like the ending mm-hmm. was the perfect note. Mm. Uh, like it, it almost could have been like the first chapter. But I just, like I said, it's just I don't know. We've literally seen Viv go through these changes mm. and come out as the character we love and know, and to have her go back. Um, mm-hmm. There was nothing wrong with it, but I just, I just, I would rather a short story just about. I don't know, a stock mixed up and they, they, they you know, this is how they got <laughs> into like la, la, la almond milk and lactose yeah. fruit milk or something. It, right. Uh, <laughs> there was nothing wrong with it, but because of what it was, like none of that action or the high tension did I care about because that's not what this book was really about, save yeah. for like a climactic ending. And even then it was about l- losing things rather than like the big action fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just, I don't know, it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. But I, I just, mm-hmm. I didn't care. Right. Okay. I said I quite enjoyed it. I liked yeah. that. I liked the fact that I was. It was familiar characters Ooh. in an unfamiliar setting with a bit of action, which is something we hadn't had really for the main story, and that was the point of it. But mm. it was nice to see them in, and it was again, it wasn't really extreme action. It was light hearted no, action. There was a, a good a, a skirmish in the house was got quite a, a, I would say aired on the edge of brutal at times, um, in its description. But it was nice seeing this writer write action mm. from a personal like a perspective of just trying to write and attempting to have written action in the past um it was nice seeing how it was done and how he took to it mm. uh, and brought uh, and what he brought to it and I, I really liked some of the entrances and the sort of like, no <laughs> sort of i guess stuff. we get to see her guild in a bit more action yeah uh, yeah that was that was quite good fun i guess the highlight for me was with showing her heart like this she saw sort of, mm-hmm. they're sort of bountying up bounty hunting after someone and mm. then Viv kind of sees like why this person is doing it, mm. uh, like why like this person is wanted for having like stolen something, for example. And then when there's like a bit of a heart story behind why they stole something, and it's mm-hmm. just a little genuine and uncynical, like Viv mm-hmm. just sort of like, okay, I, I you know, yeah, you know, it's really this... and, like yeah. she, I it's guess she understands is... like it's someone is arguably pursuing a dream, yeah, like someone wants out of their life, someone wants to change tracks. Um, yeah which is just very yeah, on par definitely. with this novel like can we can we change our nature mm-hmm. it was very it was nice to see the start of that turn i think mm. yeah um, that's true um so so you would follow up you you'll get a copy of the the sequel the prequel like this world you're happy to be in this world and with viv yeah yeah i i would i was pleasantly surprised to find that there was something else in this world um mm. and i would love i would definitely go and read it i was gonna say i guess if i put faith in the author that like 
it's just going to be this niceness just in another time. Like, i got to remember, it won't be a gap of, like, it's just Viv, a whole novel of Viv going, I just, okay, I'm going to get into this industry, but I, a part of me wishes I could have taken a course in a quieter life. Like, it's going to be its own mini adventure and new mm-hmm. characters to also sort of fall mm. in love with. Mm-hmm. That hopefully ties to this one. That, that's exactly what he says. Is there anything you can tell us about your next book? The safest thing, the safest thing I can say is that it's set in the same world in the city of Thune, and features some new main characters. It's a standalone story, but has some familiar faces may pop up. I really enjoy series where individual books work by themselves and can be read in any order, but there is a cumulative effect of seeing more of the world the more you read them. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, just going back to the writing and the challenges that I mentioned earlier on in the cast, that the writer felt, he was, he was asked, what was the most challenging aspect of writing Le- uh, Legends of Nartes? And he says, sitting down and putting words on the page. It still worked for me. And setting up a routine where I make regular daily progress is key. Since this always comes after a full day of my regular work, which involves interpreting someone else's fiction, there's a certain amount of endurance involved. In retrospect, everything is fun. But in the thick of it, it's just one word after another until they hit at the end of a chapter. Oh, yeah. I guess I didn't take into account that he, he's like reading books all day. Mm-hmm. Like he comes home and does, you know, not does the same thing, but like if that worry if, you know, like if he's reading a good fantasy book at work and he mm-hmm. comes home and it's like, oh dear, I've just written a chapter that just mm. sort of, I've just ripped off what I've been doing at work. Yeah. Uh, I guess I, I he did say he planned this one out. Like he did sort of like, create a bit of a skeleton to follow i think after years of failing nanowrimo mm-hmm. i think this year he said the year he did this was a bit more structured right mm. structure structure mm-hmm. wannabe writers it's the key uh one other question i have for you in my list of questions do you think this story works without the fantasy elements oh uh i guess so but then like half the fun is the fantasy hmm um i guess i it like i have a bunch of books on my shelf that are like penelope inherits her uncle's bookstore a small rum shuckle store in like the back streets of france and she just decides to give up her life and go for it and that like i haven't read them but i've probably got about four or five with a similar esque right. concept about someone doing a bookstore and they're in our world so mm. i guess it seems odd because uh, when we think of bookstores, for example, my first thought is a quaint independent store. Mm. But when I think of coffee, my first thought is probably like big corporations and Starbucks. And oh, that's ones. interesting. Okay, yeah. Um, so I guess, sure, it would work. But is it something I would have been drawn into without that fantasy element? I don't know. Mm. Like, would mm. you have like being being a coffee enthusiast and having this sort of like, you know, semi-dream yeah, dream of I just, just like yeah. I could do that if it had just been if I had another book I'm like oh there is another book it's not necessarily cozy but it is it is about someone in our world just a comedy setting up a mm-hmm. coffee store I possibly, yeah I probably would have read it because because it is about coffee shop ownership mm. um, and the idea of it yes I probably would have read it the, the fancy thing. element definitely pulled me in it was the cinnamon on the cine bun. Exactly. The cover, you know, the cover for this book is beautiful. It's a really nice, mm. especially the one I've got. And then you've got the uh, the more fantasy that... looking one, which is the interior. I believe one. this one is the original self-published one. Mm-hmm. And he massively credits the success of the book, massive portion of it to this cover. Yeah. He's like, you literally, it summed up the book. So if you look at that, you get yeah. that in the book, and that's down yeah. the artist. So when he signed with Tor, and they said we're going to give you a new cover, he basically sort of tried to put effort into negotiating that this cover would be on the in page mm-hmm. of of the I think that's the UK one, mm. the UK hardback. He wanted that cover a part of it because he just felt it become like an integral part. Of the Why book. do you think Thor that decided that they wanted to change the cover? I don't know. They, it's very often you get a UK and an American. Mm. Um, edition right okay. Uh, maybe it's to create demand on one or the other right i never know i i, I was interested i love it when uh if i can get an answer to why a name was changed like i love listening to screenwriters when they're like we adapted this play and if if they just change the name 
when it, when it, mm-hmm. sometimes it feels arbitrary, like they change Daniel to David, and it's right. Like, why? What was the reason? Like it's someone the, had to make a decision reason. to do that, and you don't always get it. But sometimes it's just like, oh, you know, there's another character later on because this, and we were just worried, even if it's not a good reason. It's mm-hmm. nice to know that there was some thought into it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I guess it's sometimes they they might have wanted to separate because it had been a self published book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he said that's where the short story came from. It wasn't a part of the original. He just felt like if, if he wanted to give people extra, if, if just in case they were buying it again. I don't know if the quality right. is probably upped with tour. Yeah. But I think he did say like the apart from the tour logo and like the the some of the tech info, like this is mm-hmm. the, this American version I have is the same as the, the self published. Which, right okay it's always a dream huh like i um i don't know but like we've always sort of talked about like we said the nanorimo and the dabbling mm-hmm. in writing and i'd love to have done this but i mean i'm definitely on travis's side of like it's not fun to write always no. um i guess it's, hard. Person, it's like, very hard if you just wait for inspiration and that that oh yeah i'm creating art you're never going to get it it's it's what's the mm-hmm. saying like one percent inspiration 99 percent perspiration Rough. yeah <laughs> yeah um I guess yeah, this this new it's not even new, but this world of like self publishing can sort of change someone's life and blow up a book. I mm-hmm. guess it's still not the lucky few, but um, I don't know. I guess there's there's sort of a certain set amount of still paper and hard work to go and self publishing. I don't think it's as easy as like nope. blah blah blah. Scroll down, hit hit the accept, and I yeah. send them my PDF. Yeah. Um, Fiction, I guess you still have to get like an outside editor or pay a copywriter yes, yeah, to yeah, go through it. And it. I guess that came through his own pocket because he just mm-hmm. thought I might get sales. But it 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 sounds very uncynical. Like he didn't really do it with any profit in mind. Like he, I'm sure he thought he'd sell a few copies, but mm. never in his dreams did he think he'd become like a number one seller. Mm. Um, and he does he does say in, in one of his questions is, "What's the best writing advice you've ever received?" Mm. He, he replies, use words you know in your own voice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, write what you know. Mm. You hear that a lot. You want to hit NaNoWriMo this year? <laughs> no, that's in November, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, you've got a while. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, after reading this, again, it goes into, I, you know what, I, it's not, I'm not that far off. I'm pretty sure I've got something like this in me. I <laughs> can write this. You know, I have... I have gnomes on the backs of walls being chased by fairies and <laughs> by birds and all sorts of things happening in my head. And they're paused. I just need to unpause them and carry on writing. I've written 14,000 words. Nice. I just need to write the other 14,000. Mm. Do you know what and they I are? Have like a short story. No, that's the problem. Are. I haven't mm. got, I've got no idea. And I need to find out what that is. I need to let them tell me <laughs> um, and believe like- in them. I think they have changed the rules for NaNoWriMo. Not that there were ever rules, but there was like, here's what it's meant to be. Mm. You know, it used to be like, you have to start a fresh project, blah, blah, mm. blah, blah. They've sort of gotten rid of a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's more about just just get something, just just try every day for yeah, this month put, to write put something. words on a page. You know, there are like stars, I think, you know, like... If you are yeah. going to do that, then tick this box and not a reward, but just like an email that says, congratulations, you get yeah. this like yeah. incentivized. Uh, digital gold medal. Yeah, it's been incentivized. Um, it's always very work-based for me. I'm very project-based. And I think last mm. year I was all hyped to do it. And then my project shifted. It was like, it's all over. Like, I, I can't really deliver. I guess I was listening to a podcast called like, if we can, you can. So I can't remember, but yeah, it was these two women who write. And it was like, you know, we're both mothers who have full-time jobs. So whenever mm-hmm. you're feeling like you're too busy, I'm not saying our mothers of full-time jobs are the most busy people in the world, but we have obligations that mm-hmm. have to be fulfilled. And if it's like you can get up and write for like 15 minutes a day, then that's what we do. It's you're you're never too busy to write. Yeah. Because you should yeah. just write a little bit. We shall see. Prioritization. Yeah, but I've got a PlayStation and I like to sort of shoot, shoot Nazis in a fantasy. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's I don't know. It's hard. Like, yeah, we'll get into that. No, there is the the, the the industry and the world is created to distract us at the moment, and we have to switch those distractions off and focus on things that we really, really want. I guess instead of what everybody else wants us to want. My my biggest thing, mostly, is just confidence. I suddenly thinking, I think this is rubbish. <laughs> 
am I just wasting my, is this embarrassing? Not is it just rubbish, but like, is this, if I gave this to someone, would they like, they wouldn't laugh, they would just be awkward. They did, yeah. They, Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, uh, yeah. good one, dude. <laughs> good one. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't even know how to give notes to you something did like it. this. Yeah, like, well done. You have written, you have, I can yeah. confidently <laughs> say that you have written some words in a sentence. And so then, then it gets to this point of like, okay so am i just wasting hours mm-hmm. that's when it starts to crumble of like could i be shooting zombies now <laughs> yeah i don't know i guess that's the because we've had it before when you know we went to like a film school when we're it's almost the whole we've talked about before trust the process when we're on a shoot and you're like oh this is stupid i don't know what i'm doing right now and then yeah it's like remember your storyboard remember everyone is here to support you just go for it don't worry about that at the end Mm-hmm. Like if you, you're shooting and you're worried about the final product, you don't even have a final product. So you should be yeah. so lucky as to have a shit film because right now you don't have a film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a I think it's That's quite a- clear we both give this one a thumbs up. I 100%. I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, at no point did I ever feel like it was a chore to read. Um, I like thirty nine thousand others. I would give a positive <laughs> five star review. Yeah, I was just reading with glee, mm. uh, which is just super nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was I easy guess, to read. Yeah, so and uh, through the process of this podcast, and I guess your futures, and I am sort of like you know what I, I will re- read that prequel book with with mm-hmm. like a joyful anticipation. Not ah, oh, he's gone this direction. I suppose I'll read it, but uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna give him benefit of the doubt. And and sort of like he can he can just make me feel this way. Mm-hmm. It's like give it like he's going to give us something new, not more of the same. Which arguably would be the very easy thing to do. Yes, I haven't read it yet, and I'm not saying it is just like simple. But uh, before the coffee gets cold, right? Okay, I'm gonna send you like, my edition. I've, I've... We're gonna we're gonna, you're gonna read it. And we're gonna cover it. You're gonna love it. Mm-hmm. We we did cover it like one of our first ones. And you were so anxious I was going to spoil it. And then I was anxious I was going to spoil it. It's a very non-review. Uh, it's basically right. a time-travelling coffee. Oh, yes. Shop in Japan. I, I thought I recognised it. Yeah. There's three of them out now. Oh, wow. And I guess because because it's like, arguably, it's three shorts tied in with one. Yeah. It's quite easy to sort of keep going. You sit in, you sit in this coffee. You could sit in this seat. You drink a coffee and you'll time travel to the same table and you can't get up and you can only talk to whoever's in that cafe mm-hmm. uh, and you have to just finish the coffee before it gets cold to return. So anyway, so my point was like, that's, I'm not saying it's easy to do a sequel, but it's very set up. For just, just keep going. There's, there's yeah. three in the first one. So, so I just need three sweet or emotional dramas mm-hmm. like a tie into this I guess format, but that's not to say it's formatic. But I, like I said, I haven't read the sequels. Sounds perfect for a Netflix series. I think there's a, a movie, like a, a Japanese movie. Yeah. A TV like show. Absolutely yeah. set up for something like that. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I might want my copy shop to feel like when I open it. Time travelling Japanese. Yeah. Just a place you can go and get lost in and really recapture what it's like to be talking to people and Will enjoying you have conversation. Free Wi Fi in your coffee store. No, I won't have any Wi Fi. You, Ooh, you won't be able to no I've, phones. I've walked out of coffee stores because there's no Wi Fi. Like I've gone to work. I've gone mm-hmm. for the like when I was first moved here and I was interviewing and I was waiting for replies. So I have there was an anarchist okay, okay, coffee shop okay. in Toronto mm. where you, you pay however much you want to pay. Right. I shut down now. I don't think yeah. I don't, I don't know what I'm <laughs> No, okay, so I take that back. I will have Wi Fi, but it will mm-hmm. only be active during certain periods of the day. There will be sessions, Wi Fi mm. free sessions, where it is just about conversation and nice. music. Because it's very much I want this jazz element to it. I want this piano always there sitting situ at the back of the coffee shop mm. that's playable. Um I want a, a mic that's always there ready to go and a stage that's always there ready to go and there will be evening like sessions where music is played consistent open mic night yeah and then to have a ban on wi-fi so nobody's looking down at their phone mm. everybody's looking up and listening and enjoying the conversation but wow. mm. yes yeah, i guess it's quite that. common here now they have an, uh, a beer license and it's sort of like it's a it's like a bar 
it's a bar mm. stroke coffee store that post seven o'clock the lights mm-hmm. dim down and they you know you mm-hmm. can get a beer during the day but it sort of turns into like not like a live bar but just like you know yeah that's quiet quiet chill bar with a bit of music that's what this th- we just don't have that in this country at mm. all. like it's always it's night club, 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 club or pub. loud music just it's never anywhere where 40 to 60 year olds can go and enjoy that speed of life mm. you get what i mean it's always the youth speed of life or nothing like uh, is there anything like the friends coffee shop or no not quite that that's, that's not too quite busty. that no yeah. that's too that it's, well, it's not too, too busty. i'd like i'd like that sort of bustle <laughs> but I, <laughs> I like the success <laughs> yeah but just not that sort of vibe but it's more chilled mm. so it's like a date night but mm. for coffee a couple of board games in the corner mm. yeah nice. yeah exactly that's what we're looking for. And it's going to be called the Dogged Page Cafe. Nice. You're going to have to be dog friendly, though. People are definitely going to. Oh, I thought it was one of. Do you do a puppuccino? Yeah. Yeah, puppuccino. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. There we uh, go. Listen, let's, let's, let us know what you thought of Legends and Lattes. Mm-hmm. Peace, do. Uh, Again, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, mm-hmm. Give us some thoughts and feedback. It would be wonderful. Yeah. Head uh, us in share, the comments. Share with your friends. Hit us in the comments or we've got an email attached to all our little uh, uh, mm-hmm. description thingies. Send us some love there. Yes, please do. We got and... we got an email the other day, didn't we? First one. Yeah, it was disappointing though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was... we can we can help you improve your your podcast. Do you want help? Do you need help? I was like, oh man. <laughs> what? Oh man. <laughs> Come on. Okay, wonderful. Mm. Thank you Don't again be... for joining us. Yeah. Go enjoy. The heat wave. Uh, remember to wear sunscreen. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm going to wrap it up around there. I want to thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed. Join us again next episode. And until then, support your local bookstores and have a great day. Mm-hmm.